Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We're preparing for what could be a stormy weekend. The question is, when? Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson is here to fill us in on the timeline. Hey there, Keith. Hey, Scott. Right now, we are all quiet. It's a great Friday evening. Temperatures in the low and mid-70s. A bit breezy out there, but no issues with our live Doppler. Uh, back to the northwest, we now have a new tornado watch just issued for Montgomery County, Calhoun County, uh, Pontotoc County, and back to the west and northwest until 6 a.m., the first watch of this event for our area. There's some strong storms out here in northeastern Louisiana and a pretty strong squall line now developing in Arkansas and Texas. All of this will gradually come our way later tonight. We still have a couple of hours to go, uh, but the storms should start to approach by 3 o'clock in the morning back to the northwest here and uh, start to squeeze on into our northwestern counties here. Uh, generally northwest of the Golden Triangle area during the night and between tonight and perhaps some redevelopment tomorrow, a few tornadoes possible, maybe some wind gusts up to 70, some large hail, and several inches of rain here as we go throughout the next uh, 12 to 18 hours, Scott. So we're going to be in the 70s on Saturday. We're still adjusting the time on these storms. We'll have another update for you in just a few minutes. Living in the area, we're no stranger to severe weather when Mother Nature strikes. Staying weather aware and alert can be life-saving. Chickasaw County EMA Director Linda Griffin says that people need to have a way to get those weather warnings. If you live in a mobile home and you need to go to a different location, or if you have a storm shelter close by, you want to have, give yourself time to get to that shelter and get family members that may not, you know, move as fast as others do. You know, the older ones, you have to give them a little more time to, to be able to, to move to a safer location. Also, to stay ahead of the storm, be sure to download the WCBI News app and follow us on social media for any weather-related alerts. Well, getting ready is important, but so is knowing where to go. Monroe County's EMA director wants people there to know where they can find shelter. Smithville, Hatley, and Hamilton High Schools have shelters there for residents. EMA director Bunky Goza urges families to discuss their plans. We encourage the people to maintain a situational awareness and have a preparedness kit. And this is part of the preparedness set, maintaining their awareness. Uh, time, when a storm happens, not the time to respond or know what to call for information. You want to do it beforehand. And ways to do that, mainly with this, the websites of different county EMA offices. Monroe County Schools usually send out a social media message when the domes are open. A Columbus police officer is suspended without pay and is being questioned by West Point police. A Columbus spokesman says the alleged incidents took place while the unidentified officer was off duty. Well, the mother of an alleged victim reached out to WCBI telling us the investigation involves illicit pictures, a cell phone, and a minor. Now, also other sources have confirmed that story with us. We've been able to confirm that officer's name but are not releasing it until he's charged with a crime. CPD as well not releasing that officer's name. West Point Police have not returned our call for comment. Columbus Councilmen say they will discuss this issue at their Tuesday night meeting. Kevin Rush, the inmate who escaped from work detail, he's back behind bars, but he didn't go down without a fight. Well, he was captured this morning in Tuscaloosa. Police there say they spotted the stolen car he was in, then Rush led them on a chase. After crashing the car, police say that he got out and ran. Police say he then kicked in a door of a home and held two victims at knife point. No one was injured. Rush was taken into custody and is facing several charges there in Alabama. New developments tonight as state leaders discuss what to do about the failing bridges. You've heard from several different officials this week. Now another group of lawmakers speaking up. The House and Senate Democrats say they're learning about funding proposals from the news. They're not part of any of those negotiations, and they want to see that change. Democrats are taking a different approach to finding solutions for the infrastructure funding problems. In the very near future, uh, hold a hearing. The caucus says a public hearing will help them to get a better focus on realistic solutions. Count on us to be ready to work with uh, leadership whenever they reach out and ask us for input. And if they don't, then you can count on us to come forward with our own proposal after input from the public and from stakeholders. Senator Derek Simmons says it's too big of an issue not to bring everyone to the negotiation table. You may have two or three people or a handful of people 
that are meeting in closed door meetings here at the Capitol that's trying to decide this basic government function, certainly what we will do as Democrats, we will open it up to all the stakeholders in the state of Mississippi. But before they ever get to new funding options, these Democrats want to address the existing corporate tax cut that was approved in recent years. We need to either repeal the tax cuts or we need to stop the, imp the full implementation of the tax cuts that we pass here under the Republican leadership and with this Republican majority. Speaking of tax breaks, I asked this group what they think of Speaker Gunn's plans to have a tax swap, a phase out of the 4% income tax bracket and an increase in gas tax. To give an even larger tax cut, that's, that's just obscene and immoral. I, th I think it's crazy that the approach to our uh, infrastructure issue is another tax cut. Uh, we need to be talking about a way to do responsible uh, governing in the state, and that includes looking at new revenue options that don't all fall in the back of poor folks. The stakeholders they're wanting to invite to that public hearing include city and county leaders, school bus drivers, and citizens that are being rerouted by the bridge closings. That meeting has not yet been scheduled. Construction on the New Hope High School and Loun New Lowndes County Schools Career Tech Center is right on schedule. Today, the Lowndes County School Board met to talk about the progress so far. Superintendent Lynn Wright says teachers are already starting to pack up to get ready for that big move. Both new facilities, Wright says, will benefit students as well as everyone in Lowndes County. We've had, had several groups that we've toured through the building. It's a state-of-the-art building, and uh, we're just so blessed to have that facility here in Lowndes County. Our equipment is being ordered right now for the Career Tech Center. It should be in in July. Both facilities are expected to open up in August. Pretty big system across the United States right now. We've got snow in the northern plains. We've got some active weather down here in the deep south, and those storms are coming our way. Your full forecast is next. A great Friday evening, the orange glow from Sullivan, Alabama, and you can see some of those stars right there. Liz sending us that great photo on our Friday. And look at our time lapses today from Columbus, Tuflo, Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon, and downtown Louisville, Mississippi, right there looking back to the west. Some of those clouds coming on into play, but we were warm. We topped out in the low 80s today. No issues whatsoever right now. All quiet with our live Doppler radar. There is a severe thunderstorm over here in northeastern Louisiana and southeastern Arkansas, southwest of Greenville. A lot of lightning in that. Uh, that is moving to the northeast. That will move through Greenville. It will move through the Delta. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect us at this point, but we do have a tornado watch now in effect for those of you in Montgomery County, Calhoun County, uh, Pontotoc County Union, uh, back to the northwest here as we go throughout the course of the next few hours. That goes until 6 o'clock in the morning. So all quiet now. We're watching that batch of storms and some additional storms back in Arkansas and Texas. This whole line is gradually shifting east, but the individual storms are moving from southwest to northeast. So it's going to take a long time probably about another 12 to 18 hours to get this whole mess through our coverage area. The brighter cloud tops illustrate the colder clouds, the taller clouds, and that is what is erupting back to the west. So a lot of active weather here. We're adjusting some of the times. We're thinking now uh, around 3 o'clock in the morning in our northwestern counties, and then those storms will march uh, across our region as we go throughout the course of the morning. Initially, uh, a damaging wind gust and an isolated tornado threat tonight. And then if we see some redevelopment tomorrow, it would probably be southeast of the Natchez Trace Parkway in the uh, late morning into the afternoon. And that would be more damaging wind, more hail, maybe some isolated tornadoes as well, and some heavy rainfall. We're all due for some rain. Several inches of rain may fall with this event. So here's... 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this may be delayed a little bit. These storms may come in a little bit sooner or uh, they may be delayed just a little bit. So the timing still suspect on some of these model runs we're showing you. So don't get gung-ho on the time and the placement of what you see. Uh, I do suspect later tonight, northwest of the Trace, a better chance for some of these storms coming on in. They probably will not affect the Golden Triangle area during the overnight. That's the way it's looking now. We'll see how it goes, though. Uh, if these storms really speed up, they could race across our area tonight. But this particular uh, iteration of this model suspects that the storms will uh, move through during the uh, uh, day tomorrow and then uh, maybe be out of here by early evening tomorrow. That could be a little bit faster. We'll just see how this all plays out. But really between now 
and about 6 p.m. tomorrow, we'll have a chance for some strong storms in our area. Again, there's that heavy rain potential, one to three plus inches with a flash flood watch in effect. So uh, those storms will move on through. Let's just stay weather aware tonight and for tomorrow. Some clouds may linger on Sunday, and then we'll clear it out as we get into early next week. And there could actually be a frost around here Sunday night and Monday morning. Most, if not all, of next week doing okay. Lots of sunshine there. Uh, but the big thing is the storms coming in tonight and perhaps some redevelopment late tomorrow morning, Scott, into the afternoon. There's more to the Amory Railroad Festival than rides and apple fritters. We take you on to a reunion of the rail riders when we return. Watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. Amory's Railroad Festival features attractions for all ages, but there's a group of regulars who not only know about the railroad's history, they've lived it. WCBI's Ali Martin reports. As the Journey Tribute Band Resurrection was rocking out for a large crowd at the Amory Railroad Festival, Members of the hobo community were welcoming visitors to their camp, signing souvenirs and educating people about the hobo way of life and how it all started. Their name hobo comes from the fact that they carried a garden hoe over their shoulder looking for farm work. Gypsy Moon is a veteran of the hobo lifestyle. In fact, she was crowned queen of the hobos at their national convention in 1990. She has been to this camp at Frisco Park, dubbed the Jungle, many times and says the railroad festival draws an eclectic crowd. People that you find here are people who either honor their history and their past or who actually live a life similar to what the old hobos live. K-Bar has been part of the hobo culture since 1970. The former Marine is married, has a family, but loves the freedom associated with hobo culture. There's something about riding freight trains especially. I know that it's illegal. We're not supposed to say it's, I'm certainly not trying to promote it. It is dangerous, but uh, something about it gets in your blood. You can't stop. It's true. And I know so many guys, they, they, they all say the same thing. I don't do it anymore, but I really miss it. <laughs> Although he's traveled all over the country, K-Bar has a special place in his heart for Amory. I have found Amory, Mississippi to be one of the most welcoming, congenial, friendly towns that I've ever been in in my entire life. I love this town. And uh, this is something that you hear from almost everybody who comes here for the Railroad Festival. K-Bar and other residents of this temporary camp say visitors are always welcomed and encouraged to stay a while. In Amory, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News. I'm sure there's nothing like it. Well, by the way, I want to let you guys know, due to severe weather tomorrow, Amory PD has said that the festival will not open to the public until 4 o'clock tomorrow evening. Coming up next in sports, the Rebels smash Vanderbilt in Nashville. Tom has the highlights next. Rebels look to get back on track in the SEC, traveling for a top 15 matchup in Nashville. Number five, Rebels taking on number 15, Three, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt would lead two to one until the top of the third. Not anymore. Thomas Dillard's going to deliver with an RBI single. That's going to bring home some runs. So it's a tie ball game, 2-2. Two, two. 
though the Rebels would take a 4-2 lead. And looking to add that in the sixth inning, Nick Fortes comes through with a laser beam down the right field line. That's going to score some runs. Come on home, Gray Kessinger. Ryan Olenek would score. And Nick Fortes would slide in safe for a triple. He's been red hot the past couple weeks. And in the top of the seventh, Will Golson cracking that zero in the home run column. Golson's first home run is a solo shot to left field. The New Hope native make, gives the Rebels the 7-2 lead, and they don't look back. Ole Miss dominates Vanderbilt 11-3. The Rebels are now 29-6 on the season. Four left. Mississippi State drops a tough one on the road at Auburn, 2-1. Can't blame Connor Pilkington. He goes seven and two-thirds with only two earned, three Ks. The run support just was not there for him tonight. The, Rebel, or the Bulldogs will look to beat the weather and Auburn to even up the series tomorrow at 2 o'clock. To Houston for some baseball. 3A district champ Hilltoppers facing Nettleton on senior night. Two runners on for Houston. Colton Peel delivers. He grounds out to first, but Luke Hancock scores from third, so the toppers take the one nothing lead. Still in the inning, Jared Bean, he's going to rip one deep to left field, stays just inside the park, but here come some runs. Kylan Carter extends the Houston lead to 2 nothing. but top third for Nettleton. Down here, Davis Oswald hits a shot to left. Almost deja vu to the one Jared had, but the outfielder can't make the diving play. Oswald gets safe at first base with runners on. And so, looking to make something happen, happen. Colton Osborne swings and misses. Luke Hancock drops the ball but gets the out at third. This game would go until the seventh inning. Nettleton would rally back, but Colton Peel wins it on a walk-off single with the bases loaded. Houston gets the W 4-3 over Nettleton. Itawamba HS hosting 4A rival Pontotoc. And Pontotoc was not very nice. Top second, 2-0. Now make it 3-0. Hayes Wilson's single to left is going to bring a runner home. So Pontotoc leads 3-0. That's about all they would need, but they wouldn't stop there. Same inning, Hayden Harris singles to center. Two runs come in. It's now 5-0 Pontotoc. There's that 5-0 lead. And later on in the second, senior Ryan Franklin, sayonara baseball. That one didn't have a chance. Has reservations somewhere in the trees. That three-run homer makes it 8 nothing. Pontotoc. And in the fourth, Harris drills one into the gap. Two runners score easily. It's now 10 nothing. Pontotoc, thanks to a stand-up triple from Harris. And after adding another run, Pontotoc had no problem putting runs on the board, but the story was Trevor Morgan. My man Trevor would go five innings. That's all the game would take, and Trevor wouldn't give up a single hit. Morgan's no-hitter. Capped off by this ground ball. Nice play to get the out and give Trevor his no hitter. Pontotoc gets the W 12 to nothing. News from today Morgan Williams signs a training camp contract to join the WNBA with the Las Vegas Aces. Training camp opens for the WNBA on April 29th. It's early, but if Mo could be a steal and jump on that final 12 woman roster, it'd be Mo, Asia Wilson, and Kelsey Plum. How about that for some offense? Let's go to some signings for today. New Hope basketball star Tyler Stevenson makes it official, signing with Southern Miss. Stevenson will join Calhoun City's Ladavius Drain as WCBI guys playing for the Golden Eagles. The 6-7 forward was a force for New Hope, averaging 23 points, almost 11 boards, and 3.5 and blocks per game. And then to Ponatau, Maddie McGregor signs the dotted line to continue her soccer career at ICC. This past season, McGregor finished with 10 goals and 13 assists. Here's a cool one for you for Pontotoc soccer fans. McGregor will also go play with Sarah Witt at ICC next season, so you'll be able to see some Lady Warriors trying to make things happen up in Fulton for the ICC Indians. That'll do it for sports for tonight. We'll have a last look at your forecast coming up next. Watch for those yellow shaded counties, our western counties, until 6 o'clock in the morning. We're watching these storms back to the west. It's still going to take some time to get these storms in here, so probably after 3 o'clock in the morning. I know they look close, but it's going to take some time to get on into our western counties. Those storms will move across our area tomorrow, so just stay weather aware tonight. And during our Saturday, we will be here on TV if things get rough. Also on Facebook Live later on tonight and tomorrow morning, too, to keep you updated. Yeah, we know you guys will be watching. Be sure mm -hmm. to download our app as well for all that information. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for, for watching. Have a good weekend. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow and next week.